Hello guys, welcome back again to Kenya Pan TV. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Muso Tiano. Please welcome. Thank you for coming here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. No, thank you and thanks for hosting me. Yes, yes. So just to quickly let people understand, uh, just to introduce yourself, who you are, and uh, of course, everyone in Kenya knows you, but there's an international reach for this as well. My name is Muso Tiano. Uh, Muso yeah. Tiano is a former Kenya international who played for the national team 105 games. I captured the national team for 15 good years. Um, I went to South Africa and played for a club called uh, Injin Santos, which I played professional football for 15 good years. And then I became an assistant coach at Santos. That is after I retired. And then back in 2010, I came back to Kenya and uh, I was analyzing matches with two passports. And then I get an opportunity of starting coaching the national team. And I think I was called by ZDK Otino was then the head coach of the Kenya national team. And then uh, from there, I started an organization called Kick Off to Hope, which is uh, more or less trying to give hope to the youngsters who are coming in through the community. There is uh, women empowerment, which you are doing at the organization. There is feeding of, uh, of food, which you are giving to the kids around in the community. There is sewing class, which we do with the, again, with the, so whatever you do to the football in the community, we try to empower the community. I think for me, I grew up as a community guy. So I know, I know the purpose of the community. And then there is a program which you are having built on to whatever I'm doing to football. It is called Vision 47. Vision 47 is to go to each and every county in Kenya. We go to Mashinani, where we know that we meet coaches who they don't know the basic skills of kit, of teaching or, or playing football with the youngsters, just to, to give them hope. And uh, more or less on come to the academy. I'm a, a well-trained coach who's having a cafe license. Yeah. And I'm, I'm educate nowadays they call them not the instructors, the educators. I can educate until the level of cafe B, which I think after playing football, I retired and then I get some budget. But uh, more or less I'm down with the community. Somebody maybe can wonder why, why am I not coaching the big club? You know, there's a time I was coaching K Kenya Police, which is one of the top clubs in Kenya. But I just resigned. I resigned because with whatever they were doing, you know, sometimes in Kenya we say that uh, abnormal is normal. Whatever I saw there, I think it was abnormal. And yeah. for me, after, you know, after, after doing my badges, after playing football, you know, there's some things which I could not have made decision because of somebody sitting somewhere to tell you that, hey, you need to take that player out. You need to eat at this time. So we didn't have that authority. And I felt like it was undermining me, first of all, as, as a coach as somebody who has played in. So it was not, not just because of you're doing me a favor to go and coach the team. Mm. So I just felt like, no, there's no way I'm going to continue with the, with the job. So that is more or less about me. But nowadays yes. I'm focusing Glittering. more on, on the future. Uh, you can get me there. Okay. So, um, okay, that's, that's stuff from good stuff. So just to go back on your more, just to go back more on your professional journey as a, as a professional footballer. I mean, what was it like? I mean, I mean, what inspired you when you were a young person to get into football? I think I didn't tell you about my family because you see, for me, I was grown in a family of 11 and uh, I'm the seventh in the family. And I think on, on those early 80s, it was just about football. I think football was everything into our table. And uh, we saw that football is going to take us out of poverty. And, you know, mind you, those years are like the early years. It was a sense of if you don't have a, a brother or a cousin who's playing for these big clubs like Gormai and AFC Leopards, mm. it was so difficult for you to get that opportunity. Because for me as a lawyer, it was automatically I was going to play for Gormai. And <laughs> okay. you as a lawyer, yeah. just automatically you want to play for AFC Leopards. And uh, my, I think I had a dream. And I think for me, the dream was to play in one of the big clubs in Kenya, you know, which I think I did. You know, I didn't play for Gormaya, you know, as, as a Luo. It was yeah. a very big thing in Kenya. I played for AC Leopard. And then I played for the national team when I was still a student at Ufafa Jericho. You know, I can say that I was among this first, maybe the students, some of the students who played for the big clubs and the national team in the early ages. And then uh, since 1992, I played for the national team until 2010. But it was not easy, I cannot lie to you. You know, you know, it was a matter of discipline. It was a matter of, you know, that's why whatever I'm doing, I'm mm. doing it because of the community. And, you know, going to South Africa, that was in 1997. Again, it was just a friend of mine called Elias Makori, who's working with a media, media company. 
you know, he went to Cape Town, he was in a tour. And then funny enough, he went and saw what Santos were playing. Mm. And then just say to the boss and say that, hey, there is a player who I think can help you in your department as a, as a center defender. And that is how I went to South Africa. You know, a totally different that's how, that's how your transfer to South Africa happened? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just a stranger. It was just a stranger who saw me playing and he was very happy with me and seeing the way I was playing. He just opened a door for me. But I uh, remember what I said. It was about knowing where you came from. Hmm. You know where you're going. You know, and uh, when I look at it, it was a matter of, wow, there's no way I'm going to go back to Kenya. Because when you were, when was, you were in South Africa? Yeah, for the trials, you know. Okay. There's no way I was going back to Kenya. But maybe even going to South Africa, you know, there's a, there's a story which people doesn't know that uh, at before going to South Africa, I was in in Germany with FC Cologne. Okay. And uh, I went to VFC Stuttgart at a very early age. That was in 1996. But I didn't get that opportunity of signing with them. I was a bit more shy. So I, we didn't make it to Germany. When I came back to Kenya, I only stayed for three days. And then this opportunity came for me to go to South Africa. One thing I, I think really helped me in South Africa, first of all, I, I found a, a host family, which they became as my parents. Yeah. You know, And uh, I can say that the discipline-wise, I think it was top notch. Knowing the culture, I think really helped me and the people were behind me. So it was one season, first of all, because they really asked me, hey, you're from Kenya. You have never seen a Kenya who's playing football because Kenya has been known by running. Running, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Long distance running. <laughs> Long distance running. And they were so surprised, first of all, to see that I'm not even a quick runner. So they were wondering what is happening. <laughs> you know that I but then touching on your on your journey playing for Santos, I mean, you made over 300 appearances uh, playing for Santos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking at the club now, I mean, they've recently been relegated. I don't know if you follow them still, uh, but, uh, you, but you achieved a lot. I mean, you won the title there. That is the time with the South Africa just getting independent. You know, it was, you know, it was the early ages of now, hey, you need to put your mark into the country. So... But I can say that discipline really kept me. And when you look at the, the club itself at the moment, you know, it is just a pity that uh, it is where it is because I can say that first I thank the, the chairman for giving me that opportunity of playing mm -hmm. for, for, for Santos, you know, that professional level. But on the other side, I think I'll blame him. I'll blame him in a sense that he had very good leaders. He had leaders who didn't, he didn't respect them. So he had so many leaders, Duncan Crow, he had so many leaders. But I think for him to keep them, I think he didn't have the plan B for them. Because I think if you look at whatever these guys have achieved into their countries, they, they could have built his, his empire in a totally different way. But it reached a point where when you feel like you are, we are retiring, he was not honoring his, his guys who fight for him. Mm. It was a matter of, I've got somebody, you, you can go. You know, in a, go, in a way that it was not a very professional level. I think for me there I can complain, I can I can blame him to where the club is uh, until today. And then okay, and then going back to Kenya, I mean, what's your view on the state of play in the Kenyan Premier League? I mean, how how is it for young kids to come out of that league now and achieve like you know close to what you've achieved? But the discipline wise, I think is a bit of a challenge because football in Kenya is still like a hobby. Football in Kenya is still like you know what a hey, You'll play, but uh, once you're 27, 28, you cannot look back and say that uh, you've achieved things into football. Yeah. Because maybe whatever the guys are earning, whatever people are coming to run the football itself. Yeah. Because for me, but, uh, since I retired, I think uh, football has put me where I am I today. Sometimes it's so difficult for, for people to understand me. Because I think for staying in South Africa for 15 years, sometimes I've seen things which people have not seen, mm. you know. You come in, you try to tell people this is what has happened, but it, it is difficult. It is so totally different. First yeah, of all, with the different, mindset. different systems and a different different setup they have over there. And um, yeah. and well, I mean, I mean, looking at it now, I mean, what would if a young person now wanted to get into the game? I mean, what would you advise them, like, or young Kenyan now trying to make it into the to the game? I think, first of all, it's just to the coaches who are handling these kids. 
because the, for them is to tell them that there is a process and for them to get the right training sessions because I, can, I cannot lie to you. You know, I was once in the national team and you find that basic uh, things which you're supposed to be doing at the age of 11 and 12, you're wasting uh, around a one hour for you to do the basics in the national team. Yeah. But I think for us just to get these kids, to get these kids, you know, life is totally different in Kenya. Life is totally different uh, from And how can you manage for you to be to be playing maybe in South Africa or maybe to be playing in Europe? What need, what do you need to have? Because sometimes we don't we don't train our kids to go and let's say adapt to the situations mm. because the potential is there, the talent is there. But I believe that uh, people like us who have played football, people have, people like us who have been to there, you know, guys who have been there running football, you know, guys who have been there like saying that uh, we are coming to give hope to these hopeless, is to give them the good direction. Because sometimes you just give them basic trainings, trainings which will never take them anywhere. You know, and I believe that uh, sometimes you lie to these young kids who are coming in. Not all of them will get that opportunity of going there. Mm. About, uh, about football, what else can we give to them? in a sense that we can help them. But the talent is there. The infrastructure is still a challenge. The corporate size is still a, a big challenge. And somehow the league, you know, the, the, the league which is called the league needs to be a bit more stronger. Because nowadays we are dominating East Africa. Now we are not. And for us to have a very strong league, we'll have a very good national team and players will be going out. If you look at the situation now, we are only having two players which we, we, who we can say that are playing top leagues. You know, that is uh, Joseph Okum and uh, Michael Nalunga. The rest of the guys are playing still in, yes, good leagues, but not bigger leagues. So the population of Kenya is very big. So we need, we need to work even more to see how we can take our players outside Kenya. Okay, I mean, I, I agree with that. So, what, so, what, so what's your, what do you do as a personal interest? outside of football, I mean, you, you touch more into your community work and charity work. Is that more like what you're focusing now on compared to like coaching kids and stuff? I think for me, after getting my badges, first of all, I, I fight very hard for me to get the, the badges through the Federation, which I think I can say kudos to them because it is not easy to play football and then you go back to class mm. and I've managed to get the badges through the Federation. Yeah. And I think for me, see, what can I do with whatever I've learned? You know, because... I, I feel in the grassroots level, that is where the big challenge is. Into primary schools, that is where the primary the challenge is. Because of, of the kind of training which these kids are getting. Uh, and for me, with my organization, which is called Kickoff to Hope, I think uh, it has is to give hope. It's to give hope to kids who will come in. And I know maybe not everybody is going to coach the big class in Kenya. And for me, at the moment, I'm coaching juniors. Mm. And I feel like that is my purpose and that is my passion. And I love it. These are kids who normally come in, they don't know anything. Just for you to come and, and give them that proper training. For them to succeed, it is a plus to me. For them to know what is football and the benefit of football and the life skills, I think for me, I feel like that, that, is, that is my purpose. You know? And then as a, as a fan, as a football fan, what, what, what league interests you as a fan? Which, which, which league do you watch as a professional games? <laughs> You know, you know, you know. As a fan now, I'll, I'll I'll try to be a bit more diplomatically. Yeah. Because now I'm watching football as a coach now. Okay. And, uh, w w <laughs> you know, I used to I used to watch English football. You know, yeah. in the sense that uh, Chelsea used to. Uh, I used to be a very good fan of Chelsea. Okay. I can tell you the reason I was supporting Chelsea because of Marcel Desai. Yeah. Yes. You know, Marcel Desai as a centre back, and I think he was like my idol. You know, wherever he was with the international football. I even end up giving my son the Saeed's name. So, oh, okay. Wow. That's a, that's a big big compliment. <laughs> and then my, my, my son's first born, second born, his name is the Saeed. And at the moment, the boy is around, wow, 24. Okay, Mr. Tenio, I'll just give you, if you don't mind, some quick quick fire questions and see which uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the fans would like to know your view on this. Okay, the first one okay. would be uh, Zidane or Figo? Zidane. Okay. Uh, what is this? Oliech or Wanyama? Wow. I'll go for Dennis. 
اوكي قول ايش؟ راجي او رومبا رومبا اوكي اند اند ذا ذس از ذا موست كومنلي انترناشونالي ريكوجنايزد كويستشن ميسي او رونالدو I'll go for Messi. Ah, okay. That's, that's, that's a classic one. That's what we do. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Teorio, thank you very much for this lovely interview. I really appreciate this. I know you're a very busy man. Uh, and it's good that you come and join us. This is the place for we give voices to a lot of uh, fans out there. Uh, you know, there's not really much access for football fans in Kenya, you know, just out there to get their voices heard. So we're trying to create something for them. So again, Thank you very much. I really appreciate for joining us for this. No, you're welcome. And Santi San, I hope the advice is going to be good for the youngsters who are coming in and uh, we're here to help.